here's a message about the following programme for the snowflakes out there. All filming of these products were done freehand, not mounted on a weapon. Got that? Time to go and look at things that go bump in the night. Well, maybe more of a scurry and a dig. It's night vision time. And welcome to AAR On Air. Today it's thermal scope time. You know scopes are a vital part of your overall gun package and should never be an afterthought because you will regret it and finish up paying twice in the long run. Then of course we have night vision which comes in all forms and shapes from IR to thermal or simply an illuminated reticle. Now this week's review isn't likely to be for the backyard plinker on a very tight budget, far from it, but for the somewhat more serious shooter, and more specifically it's likely to be for the individuals doing a spot of pest control, either on an amateur, semi, or professional basis. I do hope that it will still be of interest to everyone hopefully with a few interesting points around night shooting. Recently I have tested quite a few night vision scopes and I have indeed been using a few with regard to my own particular rabbit problem at home and certainly with regard to the more budget end night equipment I came to a conclusion that if you're going to go down the more budget end of the market and there is nothing wrong with that, in my opinion and experience, you'll be better off using a thermal scope to find the quarry in the first instance, but you may be much safer taking the shot with an IR or infrared scope. Why? Well, thermal scopes are amazing, and it's quite a shock how they pick up a heat signature from something you had no chance of seeing in the pitch black of night without one. They can also find stuff an IR would overlook quite often in its black and white format. And I have even experienced a situation where the quarry was in the shadow of a tree and the infrared light simply exaggerated the darkness of the shadow, making the quarry completely invisible to infrared vision equipment. At this point, I can hear someone saying, so why don't you simply use thermal instead? The issue I've found is that on a more budget end, thermal scopes, it can be very difficult to tell the difference between a sitting rabbit a next door's sitting pet cat. I'm sure there are some non-cat lovers out there who will have a different opinion to me, but it is someone's pet, and I would be pretty confident you'll be breaking some law or other if you went right ahead and took the shot anyway. Hence my approach of spot with a thermal, shoot with an infrared. But of course, this doubles your cost and the amount of gear you need to carry. Then I tried the thermal scopes from ATN. Now they do have quite a few in their range and too many to review all in one programme. So I've very kindly been loaned two from the guys at ATN. One from either end of the price range. Now I've already said these are the higher end of the market in terms of price and quality. So please, no comments like you're talking ridiculous money and no one can afford them, etc, etc. Because you will be surprised how many people out there can afford this type of equipment. Although I would put the higher end models in the professional category or very wealthy amateur. All that lot said, let's take a closer look at these two. They are the entry-level ATN Mars LT 3 to 6 times and the top-end ATN Mars 4. Let's get that price out of the way first, shall we? 
The Mars LT retails around £999 UK. And the Big Brother comes in at an eye-watering £4,299 UK. And no, I'm not going to say it twice. Which isn't a lot, though, if you say it fast. <laughs> now, before you hit the keyboard with your how much comment, this one is the range topping version of the Mars 4. And they do actually start at a much lower £1,899 UK for the 19mm version, rather than the huge 75mm range topper. Let's do a bit of a walk around first to give you more of a feel for them and explain what they're all about. Starting with the LT. Now the day I do an unboxing video will be the day I quit, but it's worth noting what it comes with. You get a nice neoprene style bag. You get a USB charging cable and a high quality rubber eyepiece, which is actually threaded. And you are most likely to need it because with all of the, these types of scopes, uh -huh, it sets your eye relief distance and stops excessive light bleeding from the equipment that is likely to give your position away. Then, of course, you have the scope itself, which is high quality construction, neat and short, and initially loaded up with instruction stickers that are easily removed once you're used to your new equipment. It's 290 millimeters or 11 and a half inches in old money long, and tips the scales at 650 grams or 1.4 pounds, which isn't overly heavy. Now this is a 30 millimeter tube, but doesn't come supplied with any mounts in the box. So you will need to get yourself some decent rings. At the rear is the focus ring to get the image on the 160 by 120 resolution screen perfectly focused. This is really super smooth and just firm enough to give you confidence it's not going to slop out of focus at any point. There is also the focus ring out front to focus on your target distance. Again, smooth, but a little less firm because you're probably going to need to use it more often. So it's a good idea. There are a limited amount of function buttons on the top of the main center section with a very neat embossed ATN logo on one side and the model name and USB connector on the other. The USB connector has a rubber cover to help keep the elements out. I would say that this is more of a splash protection than some sort of high IP rating or waterproof to 10 meters depth kind of cover. After all, I didn't see anything about fitting this to some diver's harpoon gun. So splash proof is gonna be more than adequate. There is no door for SD cards or micro SD cards because this entry level version won't film your shots to show your mates down the pub. It's there to do the main task of finding your quarry. The on off button on the top is nice and simple and isn't there to send you through half a dozen menus before you eventually get it turned on or fully off, unlike some of the others. I do like simple. The remaining buttons on the top are pretty much equally simple, with the magnifying button doing just that. It takes it from three times to six times with one press. Press it again, and it goes from six times to three times magnification. So for clarity, it has the two magnification settings. Opposite this is the white hot black hot button. Again, press it once for one reading and again for the other. Then in the middle there is the brightness button which scrolls through four settings to help give you the choice of brightness depending on the time of day or night you're using this. Yes, I did say 
daytime because it does seem equally at home in the daytime as it does at night. The other side is a contrast button to help get you the preferred viewpoint on the quarry. And it does help with clarifying the image. The only other button is the center menu button that needs pressing and holding to get you to the main menu page, which has five sections to it, which again is right up my street. Not about a hundred different options to fry your brain at three o'clock in the morning when you're trying to quickly sort out your bunny issue. These five options appear inside the left screen. First up is the NUC or non-uniformity correction which is set at the factory for optimum performance of the thermal imaging and is automatic to work at optimum performance. But if you're the type of person who wants to take manual control of things, you can override it here. Then there is the PIX option, which allows you to alter neutral pixels in the display. RET part? Well, that's pretty simple. It allows you to toggle between the four reticle options. Then there is the send option, again allowing you to take control, but this time you're adjusting the thermal sensitivity of the scope. Then finally there is the zero option that allows you to complete a one shot zero action, always a favourite of mine and really pretty simple to do it. That is pretty much the functions taken care of. And to be fair, it's one of those things that even if I went through every press of every button, you would still want to play with it yourself to be sure you became accustomed to it. So I don't intend to turn this video into a user's manual video. Oh, and you also get a leveling and anti-cant display on the screen along with the internal battery level indicator, which incidentally they claim is good for around 10 hours plus working time, which should be enough for a night shooting. And my experience of using this intermittently was I never needed to charge it once. The one thing that strikes you with this is the image. Now, this is the entry-level model, and yet, even with its smaller pixel screen and 19mm objective lens, it is a shock just how clear the image is. Now, there is no orange coloration heat signature type image here. It's black and white, and to my mind, all the better for it. It is crisp and clear. Suddenly, a rabbit doesn't look quite as much like next door's cat. It seems more IR than thermal in many ways. It gives me a lot of confidence with this clarity of image. It also makes the process of zeroing a heck of a lot easier because you can see the target clearer day or night. In the past, I've filled bottles up with hot water to try and zero some thermal scopes. No need to do that here. Suddenly, it seems you may not need a separate thermal and IR scope to get the job done. So, no taking separate shampoo and conditioner into the shower, if you get my drift. This one piece does both jobs and starts to make this look like value for money. Getting images from this proved to be a nightmare because the refresh rate of the screen inside was playing up even with putting a part on the back, using an iPhone, some of the main cameras, and even help getting Luke to give me a hand, the best that we could really do was still images. But when you look through it, when you're using it, oh, it, it's just so clear. I'm, I must admit, a thousand pounds does sound an awful lot of money for a, a night vision scope, but the image quality is so, so good. It is a top piece of kit, and I must admit, I do like it. I would love to get one of these on long-term tests, but sadly, it's been done at short notice with limited times and a holiday thrown in the middle and so much else going off. And ATN have been very understanding, and thank you very much, guys. Right, well, if this one is impressive, the next one is going to blow you away.
This is the Mars 4, the big 75mm objective big boy. Now, right from the start, my thoughts are that this is more for the bullet boys that are out taking down bigger things than rabbits and rats with air guns. But, oh, wow, the image quality on this is awesome, <laughs> truly awesome. The guys down at Vector Air were just jaw-dropped. Again, in the box, you get carry cover, a rubber eyepiece, the charging cable, a set of mounts, which are Picatinny weavers, so if you're looking to put it onto dovetail rays, you will need an adapter, a cane, no real hardship. The basic design is very similar with its focus ring to be able to see the screen clearly. Front distance focus ring, and the square section of the middle, which actually has one less button than the entry-level unit. Now that, in many respects, is where the similarity ends, because this one comes with bells and whistles attached. Firstly, the fact that this has fewer buttons is likely to mean it's going to have more multifunction buttons and will add a little more, shall we say, user interaction to the whole process. This one does come with a micro SD card slot telling you that you have the option to film the night's work. Indeed, you can actually set this to be recoil activated to automatically start the filming. Again, making me think this is going to be aimed at the bullet shooters rather than the air gunners. There is a side wheel that is the zoom ring and takes this from four times magnification right up to 40 times magnification. Again, probably highlighting the greater distances a bullet shooter would be shooting foxes and deer out at, etc. Now, that said, whilst it may be more aimed at centre fire type individuals, this would be a truly amazing addition to a high end FAC air gun. The menus and sub menus resemble the flight plan of an AC 130 in the theatre of war. It is incredible what this thing is capable of. So much stuff it would need a two part video of its own to go through everything in the detail. But, in the interest of speed and an overview, here is a list of some of its capabilities. It will record video, take still shots, manually or recoil activated. You can even do time-lapse filming, for goodness sake. It will take up to 64 gigabyte of SD card for more filming than you're likely to need in one night. You can make NUC adjustments. It has the incredible one shot zero feature, a built in rangefinder facility, and when used in conjunction with the built in ballistic calculator, yes, will automatically adjust your point of impact. There is an environment feature in which you can input ballistic corrections such as wind speed and direction. It has Wi-Fi capability, Bluetooth to connect to the ATN accessories. It has sound for your filming. A whole host of reticle choices and about seven different colour options. Heat sensitive options. This one has up to 16 times zoom feature that leaves the image crystal clear, shockingly clear indeed. It then has the option to step it up to the 40 times magnification settings. And even though the image quality starts to suffer a little under pixelation because this is digital, it is still very, very clear, day or night. The battery runtime claim is around 16 hours. And to be honest, I have no reason to doubt that. And of course, there is an app to be able to control everything from your mobile phone. Crikey. This thing is awesome. But I think I may have said that already. Now, one thing I hasten to add here is, yes, this is over four grand, but they do lower cost versions of the Mars 4 which start from around £1,900, and they will still have all of those features, just a little less magnification, and they start with the smaller 19mm lens. 
I realise I haven't gone through every detail, but if you're serious about your night vision, I can honestly say these should be on your shortlist. Take a closer look at them. Me? Well, I'm not a professional pest controller, so I would probably go for the higher-end Mars LT for the excellent image quality and simple approach. And even though filming is what I do, it's not high on my personal priority when I'm out sorting out rabbit issues around the place. I said at the start, and I will say again, on the face of it, they aren't cheap. But when you only need the one night vision rather than two, then it does represent better value than at first you think. Well, hopefully you found this brief introduction to the ATN thermal scopes interesting. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, share, subscribe, click the alarm bell, join in the chats on the website and forum and Airgun Factory, etc. A big thank you to ATN and Vector Air for sorting these out at such short notice. And above all, thank you to you guys for watching. This has been mind-blowing. Stay safe and shoot safe. If you get a chance to take a look at these, I really suggest you do. Stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.